The Netflix production, The Queen's Gambit, continues breaking some records around the world and it is number one in many, many countries. Basically, everybody's talking about this, right? And uh, as you guys know, we've been unloading uh, some videos here in Chess24, basically analyzing uh, the games that you can see in this series, but uh, we were missing the most important one, right? Probably many of you would be saying at home, uh, come on, where is the most important game of this series? Uh, you guys uh, analyze three games uh, from the first and second and sixth chapter, but uh, where is uh, the most important game? Where uh, Beth Harmon uh, faces the world champion, the Russian Grandmaster Vasily Vorgov. This is what we bring you here today. And uh, just fasten your seatbelt, it's a very amazing game. And uh, it is based uh, on a game that was played uh, like uh, almost four years ago. Uh, we'll talk about that later. And uh, just fasten your seatbelt and try to enjoy this uh, fantastic game between Beth Harmon and Basili Borgov. So Beth Harmon starts with d4, Borgov replies with d5 and then c4, entering in the Queen's Gambit. Surprise, right? And this is already a very strange uh, moment in, in the series. And I'm going to try to explain you why. In the series, uh, 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 a heavy theoretical position is arising, and we normally get to this position in the following order. D takes E4, the accepted Queen's Gambit, now E4. Of course, Knight F3 and E3 are also possible and main moves, but E4 is actually a very natural move, just grabbing the center and then intending to get this uh, C4 pawn as soon as possible back. So, knight c6, and here again, knight f3 is possible, d5, but also bishop e3 is one of the main lines. And after knight f6, knight c3, e5, this position is actually uh, arising in uh, the series. But they reach this position in a very weird order. And uh, because after the move c4, uh, we can hear the commentator in the series saying that Vorgov declines the Queen's Gambit by playing the Albin counterattack with e5. This is one of the most aggressive defenses against uh, the Queen's Gambit. And the commentator also says that this is not Borgov's style. Normally, Borgov is a solid player, but today is going all in against uh, Beth Harm. And then the only reasonable way to get to this position is actually by playing after e5 by playing e4 which is not a very good move so this is why i don't know what actually happened in the series uh, so it actually made me think uh, a little bit so i don't know what you guys think this is a mistake from netflix or maybe this is just uh, the way they planned uh, the game to be but, uh, you know, having the people as Kasparov, uh, for example, uh, as an advisor, it's actually very weird, right? To, to get to this position in this order in, in one of the most important games in, in this series. All right, so, but it has to be like that, you know, after D4, D5, C4, E5, this is the only reasonable way to reach this position that is actually shown in the, in, in the series. So, D takes E4, and here, Bishop E3, which is not also a very decent move, but then Knight F6, finally, after Knight C3, Knight C6, D5, now we are in the uh, theoretical position, right? So here black has uh, two options, one of them is knight a5 protecting c4, the other one is what Basili Borgov uh, played in this game which is knight e7. Black's idea is just to bring this knight to g6 where it not only protects the pawn on e5 but also it has some attacking chances by going knight f4 at some point, as uh, happened in the game actually. So here uh, white recaptures the pawn with uh, bishop c4 and then knight g6 and uh, Beth Harmon went for f3 in this position, just reinforcing the pawn chain. Of course, knight f3 is a very natural move, but f3, really, really interesting. Now, white wants to develop this knight via e2 and then queen d2. And uh, white's position is actually very, very flexible. You can go for a more solid approach with the move uh, short castle, or if you are in the mood, you can try long castle, then start a pawn march on the king side. Black continues with bishop d6, uh, the most natural move uh, for, for black in this position. Uh, now black is ready to castle and then this bishop is protecting not only e5 but c7, which could be attacked in the long term uh, by putting pressure on the c file. 
So queen d2 by Beth Harmon, now bishop d7 from Basili Borgov is the only available square for the light squared bishop, right? And um, black at some point could be trying to create some counterplay on the king side by playing a6 b5. So knight g2 e2 and a6 from Basili Borgov. And now Beth Harmon plays bishop b3, prophylactic move against b5, which is anyway played from Basili uh, Borgov. And now Beth Harmon plays a4, just trying to ruin, uh, to put some pressure on the queen side, uh, but uh, after this move, of course, uh, now white is not gonna castle long side, right? Because, uh, you know, uh, after the move, a4, some lines could get open, for example, the a file or the b file in the short term. And here, uh, black has to decide if uh, he wants to keep the tension or uh, maybe the move b4. b4 is actually, uh, pretty inaccurate I would say because after 91 you're actually feeling so well in this position with the white pieces your idea is to bring this knight to f2 and then to d3 put some pressure on b4 and then you have full control on the c on the on the c5 square so this is why b4 is not a very good move and uh, in the game Basili Borgov went for short castle in this position and now Beth Harmon finishes development by playing short castle as well now black connects the rook with the move queen e7 and then rook a to c1, which is a very natural move, right? This semi-open file is actually very tasty for this rook on c1. And now, you know, black, uh, you know, cannot do much on the queen side. Black already played b5, so at this point, Basili Borkov starts to create some sort of uh, attack against uh, the white skin with the move knight h5. The idea is rather simple. Black wants to bring this knight to f4, and also at some point, black uh, would love to, to play some f5. Here, Beth Harmon plays g3, which is a very natural move to the human eye, just uh, protecting the f so f4 square, so the knight on h5 is actually pretty clumsy. And here, Bergoff played h6. Probably one, uh, many of you at home could be saying, come on, Pepe, why not just strike with the Facundo pawn with f5? f5 is actually a big mistake in this position. Um, so this move is actually uglier than send the grandmother to take some drags, right? So after e takes f5, bishop takes f5, there's a fork here with g4 and, uh, you know, black struggles in this position and actually uh, black is just uh, blundering a piece. So this is why after g3, Borgov play h6 and now bishop c2 from Beth Harm. This bishop uh, puts an eye on f5 square and now Beth wants to bring this bishop to d3 to put some pressure on the b5 uh, pawn, right? Because this diagonal is not going to get opened, at least in the short term, so the bishop on b3 is actually not so well placed, right? So rook a b8 from Borgov aiming to open the b uh, file at some point, so Beth Harmon decides to close the b5 by taking on b5. A takes, A takes, and now rook to a1, just occupying uh, an open file and probably intend to go rook a7 uh, at some point. So this is why Vasily Borgov uh, just fights for the a file with the move for rook a8. And here bishop d3, putting some pressure on the b5. And now it's uh, again an important moment for black because if you go b4 after knight b5, uh, white is getting the bishop paired, this bishop on d6 is actually very important and then if black decides to, to, to take on, on b5 after bishop takes b5 uh, white has the bishop pair and black has uh, nothing in return right so this is actually slightly uh, slightly better for white so in the game Borgov played bishop b4 just pinning the knight, this knight on c3 so it's not possible to take on b5 right away and the engines uh, were saying that rook takes a1 followed by queen b6 was probably the best option for black after king g2 something like uh, rook b8 and then the position is actually very very unclear so black decided to go for bishop b4 and now white is saying you know what i'm just gonna take on a8 and then play queen c2 so this way i'm actually threatening to take on b5 right now so you gotta protect this pawn so rook b8 was definitely a possibility but Vasily Borgov decided to go for bishop c5 which is very natural, right? Now, black wants uh, to trade this uh, this uh, this bishop. For example, after bishop takes c5, queen takes c5, this diagonal has been weakened, and actually, uh, black could, could have some contemplate uh, uh, along this diagonal. But at this point, Beth Harmon plays a fantastic move, which is knight d1. 
inviting black to trade on, on e3 and this is a whole different story because now after knight takes e3 this knight is well placed here protecting covering f5 and also this queen cannot join the party on c5 and then there's going to be tremendous pressure on the c7 pawn so this is why black decided to go for bishop d6 so black protects the c7 pawn uh, successfully right so at this point beth harmon went for the most natural move in this position if i ask you guys what would you play here with the white pieces probably many of you uh, would say knight f2 this is actually the move that beth harmon uh, went for so just uh, you know improving the knight's position and then thinking about going rook c1 in the in, in the future right but this is not so accurate and then we're gonna try to explain you why this actually allows knight h to f4 a fantastic move play uh, from Basili Borgov. So in this position, the best move was knight to c1, and then we'll try to explain why in just a few seconds. After knight f2, knight to f4, and white actually cannot take on f4 because or shouldn't take on f4. At least the position is very very risky for white. After e takes f4, let's say bishop c1. Now black enjoys a fantastic attack against a white skin after the move knight to h4. And the thing is, white is not able to protect the f3 pawn. White is not able to uh, protect Facundo. Why? Because you play something like knight d4, there's queen g5 followed by queen g2 checkmate whenever you go king h1. So the only reasonable move for white here in this position is king h1 and after knight f3, black has fantastic compensation for the piece black has two pawns and the possibility of bringing the queen to h4 very soon this bishop can be can, can be sorry very dangerous after some f3 and uh, definitely uh white uh, sorry black enjoys a fantastic counterplay for the sacrifice piece so this is why after a knight h to f4 uh beth Harmon went for rook c1 but why is knight c1 so precise? Well, in this position, knight c1 is not only intended to go to b3 and then c5, but then this, this move is not possible anymore. Because now we just take on f4 and then we just play bishop d4 and the queen covers the g2 square. In the other variation, the knights were on e2 and on f2 and this, there was no way to protect g2. And also now the rook is covering f3. So definitely this is a much better version um than the previous one right so bishop d6 now knight f2 and knight to h4 we said that it's actually very risky to take this uh this tasty food on f4 so this is why beth Harmon went for rook c1 just passing and now black went for queen g5 maybe blacks intend to go h5 h4 in the future also moves like knight h4 look uh, very very dangerous in this position just pouring pressure on the on f3 so this is why beth Harmon went for uh, king h1 in this position just saying you know what now i'm gonna get your, your knight if you allow me because then this rook can also protect along the the g file so basili borgov uh, which is putting a lot of pressure plays the move queen h5 just attacking facundo again and now if we take on f4 after queen f3 king g1 this bishop is hanging also knight h4 looks extremely dangerous so White would be losing on the spot. So this is why Beth Harmon plays knight g1. Now, white's pieces are a little bit passive, but it's true that uh, black uh, doesn't find open files or diagonals to uh, continue the attack. So this is why black, uh, this is why, sorry, black takes on d3 and, uh, you know, black actually has jibbed a lot because uh, black managed to get the bishop pair, which is very, very important in chess. So knight takes d3 and now black is able to strike in the center with a move f5. Of course, black should be aiming to open the position up because black enjoys the bishop pair and the bishops, as you guys know, uh, work uh, properly, work uh, much better in open positions, right? So f5 makes a lot of sense in this position. Now Beth Harmon continued with knight c5, attacking the bishop on f7, on d7, sorry. After e takes f5, uh, black uh, doesn't need to take with the bishop, but can take with the queen, and then this position looks terrible for white, right? So knight c5, attacking the bishop on d7, and Borgov played bishop c8. Just keeping an eye on the f5 square. Rook c f1 was played by Beth Harmon. Probably she's already thinking that this, op this f5 is going to get open, so it makes sense to bring the rook to f1, where it's also protecting the pawn on f3. 
And now knight e7. This knight hasn't got squares here on g6, right? F4 and g4, uh, sorry, and h4 are covered. So this knight comes to e7 where it protects f5. And also in the future, this knight will join the party on f6, putting pressure on e4. So queen d3 uh, from Beth Harmon saying, you know what? Yeah, all of this is very beautiful. You managed to get the bishop paired, but then I'm just going to try to to grab this b5 pawn. So pawn takes, pawn takes, and queen g6. Now this pawn is very, very weak, as you can see. And now black uh, reminds white that if now uh, Beth goes for the b5 pawn, then bishop takes c5, eliminating the defender. And now after bishop takes queen e4, and then this this king is gonna struggle. So it's gonna struggle a lot in this position. So that's why after queen g6, now white plays king g2 and king h7 from Basili Borgov. Both players improve uh, the king's situation, and now this knight can come to g8 and then on f6, where it's actually a better place, right? Just put in pressure on this key square, the e4 pawn. If e4 falls, everything collapses, right? So knight f3, finally, uh, Beth Harmon uh, starts to see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? And uh, now his, uh, her pieces are, are, sorry, a little bit more active in this position. Knight g8, and here knight h4 attacking the queen. So Borgov goes for queen g4, probably the most natural square, not only putting pressure on e4, but also trying to go for some queen h3 ideas. And this is why Beth Harmon just jumps with the knight to f5, and then there are no more queen h3 ideas in this position. At this point, Borgov plays knight f6, which is a very natural move, putting pressure on e4, but it's not the most precise move. According to the engines, the best move here in this position is just rook a2, just activating the rook, and it's not that easy for white to protect the rook. Now, so many people at home will be saying, come on, stupid Spanish guy, I'm tired of you. Why don't you play rook f2 and shut up and this is completely fine for white? Well, it's not that trivial because now after bishop f5, our initial idea was just to take with the rook on f5, but now this is of course not possible because of rook takes v2. So you're forced to take with the pawn and now knight f6 and then black has a better position here. So much pressure on d5, the rook is very active and the queen can come to c4 looking for a better endgame. So basically this is just very comfortable for black, right? And if you play something like queen b1, which looks very natural, just protecting b2 and attacking the rook on a2, black can actually take on c5. And then if white takes the rook on a2, then just a simple bishop e3 and queen e2, grabbing this knight back guarantees uh, black's a very nice position. After bishop c5, the best move is bishop c5, and then let's say rook a4, and then this pawn suffers a lot. So a3, and then we reach this end game where uh, white has a lot of drawing chances, given the opposite color bishops, but definitely is a black put in the pressure, right, in this position. So after knight f5, uh, knight f6 from Basili Borgov, and then this gives some error for Veth Harmon, who plays a3 just kicking this queen back to uh, g6. And this is the position, I mean, the whole game is based in a game that was played from Ivanchuk and Wolf in 1993 in the BL Festival. That game uh, ended in a draw after 72 moves. It was a hard fight, it was a fantastic fight, a huge fight between these two players. We all love Vasily Ivanchuk, right? And the Wolf was a strong grandmaster, almost 2,600 rating uh, points. But at this point, the series, they deviate from this game and now uh, they actually uh, go for, for some variations which are very, very nice. And uh, I mean, it's normal, yeah? They have, uh, they have Kasparov as an advisor and of course the help of uh, other grandmasters and probably the engines. So uh, Beth Harmon uh, improves and then she plays knight e6 instead of, instead of g4, which was played by uh, Ivanchuk, right? So knight e6, just putting pressure on g7, and now uh, black has to, to choose whether to take this knight on e6 or not. So if you take on e6, this looks playable, but also ugly, right? Because now this, this, this pawn is a very, very dangerous pawn, and uh, you're putting pressure on d6. Uh, it's a complicated position. 
Black has also some pressure on E4, but in the game, Borgov went for the best move according to the engines, which is Rook A4, just uh, attacking this pawn on E4. And then we'll get some uh, extremely crazy and exciting lines from this pawn. Now the first question that comes to our mind is why not to take the pawn on G7, which is which looks a very important pawn in black structure, right? So in the game, Beth Hammond went for uh, B3, but after knight e to G7, black can actually take on E4, and now knight E6, and then knight takes G3. This looks very very. Uh, very interesting for black because now you can take this knight on g3 because the queen on d3 is just hanging and now you're aiming to uh, just take the knight on f5 with the checks not easy to move this king because if you go knight h2 then e4 looks fantastic and uh, uh, there is uh, some uh, move here for white which is uh, saving the game and this move is knight e7 fantastic move Let's try to understand this, this mess, right? <laughs> so if black takes on e7, then rook f7 wins the game. And if black takes the queen on d3, there is a perpetual check with rook f7, king h8, rook f8, king h7, and rook f7. Fantastic, right? So after rook a4, Beth Harmon decided to go for b3, attacking the rook. And now, again, some questions uh, come to our mind, right? So we have three decent alternatives in this position. The first one is rook a2, but then we realize that after rook f2, takes, takes. Now, uh, you know, white has solved uh, the main issue was to protect the e4 pawn. And I say, I would say that this position is around equal, right? The second interesting option is just to take this pawn with the knight, which looks like a blunder, but it's again, very interesting. And it's actually white the one who has to be careful in this position. After d takes b takes a4, knight takes e3 again is the idea, and um, black is a whole rook down, but it's actually white one has uh, that has to be careful. Again, you take this knight on g3, queen takes e3, you go to h2, e4 looks very strong. So again, the only move in this position is knight to e7, queen takes d3, and knight f8, and then this will this will end sorry in a draw after perpetual. King h8, knight g6. King h7, knight f8, and then this ends in a draw. So in the game, Basili Borgov went for rook e4, and here we see that this square is actually very, very tasty, right? Because uh, if we manage to get a knight there without problems, then we'll win the game because this is actually a fork uh, to the queen and the king. So this is why Beth Hammond played knight d6 and looks like it's almost winning, but this is far from true because now, of course, if black takes on d6, knight f8 just wins, but black can take first on e6. So we reach this position, which is extremely interesting after c takes d6, e7, and this is another interesting moment in the series. So uh, the game was adjourned, uh, postponed, right? after a, a few moves before and uh, after d5 uh, this is the first time that actually uh, beth Harmon starts thinking so she had not prepared this move so as you guys know in the, the 60s the 70s uh, whenever a game was adjourned so they used to meet with the whole team and then analyze for the whole night all possible variations but beth Harmon's team uh, didn't uh, did not take in account this move d5 so if black plays any other move, for example, b4, uh, white is actually winning with the move rook takes f6. We eliminate all pieces from the e8 square, all pieces which cover, uh, that cover the e8 square. So now black is forced to take with the pawn and then e8 just wins again. Now the rook on e4 is actually unprotected, is hanging and white wins again. So this is why d5 solves this problem, right? Because now this rook is actually protected. I mean, you take on f6, you try to do the same trick, right? Now e8, then queen takes e8, and then the rook is protected, and black is actually winning. So this is why, after a long thought, Beth Harmon goes for bishop c5. A really natural move, the bishop on e3 was not doing much, and from c5 protects e7, which is one of the keys in this position, right? This pawn is extremely dangerous for for black story. And then after the move b4, the bishop is gonna be fantastically placed on that square. Borgov plays queen e8 and 
Queen f3 was played by Beth Harmon. Now looking for some attacking ideas on the f5 square, right, with the check. Now, Queen c6 from Basili Borgov attacking the bishop on c5, and then we all know what to play here in this position. Just b4, putting some, uh, some rocks over there on the queen side, just protecting this guy on c5. And here Basili Borgov uh, played queen e8, which is a huge mistake in this position. And he actually offered a draw. And uh, with the draw, uh, they will both finish in the first place. And this uh, draw offer was declined by Beth Harmon. So probably Borgov was thinking about the triple repetition with something like queen d3, queen c6 back, queen f3, queen e8, stuff like that. But then uh, Beth Harmon continues with queen f5 and then Borgov goes for king uh, h8. You cannot cover with the queen because after queen takes, there's rook f6 just winning the game, just promoting this pawn on e7. You go king g8, then after queen e6, king h7, white can finish the game with the move rook takes f6, g takes f6, and now queen takes f6. White's plan is just to go queen f8 in the next move and then e8, and the rook cannot help, right? These pawns are actually paying in the right in the shoulder right because the rook cannot help in the defense and actually queen f8 followed by e8 is actually a win for white so in the game um vasily uh, vorgov played king h8 now i'm gonna recommend you to pause the video for a while for two or three minutes and then try to find how beth Harmon finished this game in a very beautiful way that's right guys queen f6 this fantastic queen sacrifice just wins the game Let's try to understand why. G takes f6, rook takes f6, now rook f8 is just coming, followed by e8. So this is why Vasily Borgov tried queen h5, which is very interesting because now black is looking for contemplate on the e2 square, rook f8 uh, from Beth Harmon, king, eight, uh, king g7 and e8. And the, the key of this position is this bishop, which can come uh, to f2 protecting this king. So rook e2 was played by Beth Harmon, king f1, and uh, here queen h3 was played by Basili Borgov. I mean, you don't see a couple of moves or three moves, but then you can reconstruct uh, the game and uh, one can easily see that Basili Borgov went, went for this rook sacrifice, intent to go for some perpetual checks. I mean, there are no more checks in this position. So basically, uh, I mean, if, if you trade queens, this is just a, a piece of white, right? So it's just uh, completely lost for black. So queen a3, king takes e2, queen g2, rook f2, queen e4, some more checks, and then she slowly moves the king to d2, and then she stares at him. <laughs> and then she invites him to resign what he did because there are no more checks in this position d4 b4 c2 d3 e3 f4 e2 all these squares are covered uh, from white pieces so basically no more checks and then black is a rook and a piece down and then like thousands of different mates are gonna come in this position and this way basili borgov resigned and uh, this was the game from the last chapter of this fantastic uh, Netflix series. I actually enjoyed a lot and I uh, hope you guys uh, uh, did the same uh, with this uh, analysis. And it's been a pleasure as usual to be here with all of you guys in the English section. And just remember the tour, the Magnus tour is starting very, very soon, gathering the best chess players in the world. So I hope to see you there just in English or Spanish commentary. So just have a nice day, take care. And big hacks from Spain. See you guys. And one last advice. If you guys have a date, don't take garlic. This smells like hell. The date will run away. Bye bye guys.